If you're grinding to achieve your goals, whether it's running a marathon, running your business, or running your life, WIS gets you. WIS is a tax and accounting firm that goes beyond the numbers and we're super pumped to be partnered with them. Looking to level up your business or career? Make it happen with WIS. That's W-I-S-S dot com slash J-W-S. Hey, it's A. Hey, it's P. And this is T with A and P, presented by the WNBA. We are here in Tokyo for the Olympics. <laughs> so we just finished up our opening ceremony. Like, how did you feel? Like, honestly. Okay, so, so I have a lot of feelings. Okay. It was really like, we got to go to the village. You know, we're not staying in the village. I don't know if people know. We're not staying in the village. We're staying in a hotel. No cardboard beds. No cardboard beds. We have plush king size beds. They're yeah. nice. So it was really cool to see the village. And we got to actually look in those rooms and like see how other people are living. Um, and it's really cool to be there. We were there though. We came downstairs to leave at 530. We got back at what, 1230? Yes. Like, and we were, we walked in the arena for like 10 minutes. Walking in the arena, the 10 minutes honestly made it worth it for me. It was so cool, but it was such a long road to get there. Oh, like when they say we're like going to walk, it's like a hurry up and wait walk. Like we were, I mean, we looked cute. We had our straight we shirts blazer. We looked, the drip was there, but it was well, so hot. Literally the drip was the there. The drip was we there. dripping down, down my back, body. <laughs> everywhere. It was so hot. But like, I think it was a pretty cool experience. I mean, yes. we had to go through it, of course, but mm-hmm. watching it on TV and being in it, I'm like, wow, like imagine just doing that every single year yeah it was cool to see other countries though yeah because france was behind us and they were mm-hmm. booing us and we yeah, were chanting mm-hmm. so it's pretty cool to see that but yeah. it was fun for the books uh it was awesome i mean it was such a cool experience i can't imagine if it was at full capacity because it took right. so long and it was so you know like not a lot of people were there because yes. it's normal so it definitely would have been so crazy right but even before we got to the opening ceremony just like as soon as we landed we had to sit through the airport for mm-hmm. like hours of just testing and screening and scanning and asking questions and different things always and uh that was an experience in itself dude you know what's so crazy is we were there we it felt like we were there for so long we were actually there for like two and a half hours which is a long time just to be sitting around right when we were at the opening ceremonies i was talking to like a baseball player they were yeah. there for six hours that's crazy Six hours i wonder if they have like as many people as us though i know i'm like i don't oof. we knocked out two teams and staff plane was awesome yeah plane was awesome plane was pretty cool except there's six movies to choose from so i'm glad i downloaded no wi-fi. <laughs> no wi-fi no wi-fi no <laughs> wi-fi that was not the awesome part but it was pretty cool we had it yeah. upstairs downstairs pretty nice yeah but we got through testing no negative i mean no positive test yes. Ooh, we made it through. code free knock on wood yes uh what's the coolest thing about Tokyo you think um it's kind of hard because we're in such a bubble like this is a real bubble it made me realize what we were in last year for the WNBA was not a bubble that was like a luxury hotel (laughs) that was a adventure park (laughs) because you know it's so strict with COVID we literally go from I mean I go from my room to the food room to practice and back so we don't get to see a lot but I think the village is the coolest because it's kind of the only place we've been and it was cool to see you know yeah even when we went to the dining hall that one time like it was pretty like nice to kind of be in an atmosphere where there's other athletes there and what yeah. do they do to get here and it's other sports yeah uh so yeah that had to be the coolest for me that was like, cool. the village yeah and you know we're coming here out of Vegas your hometown first of all it was hot as balls <laughs> It was 117 degrees. It was hot. How do you live like that? You don't, you just don't don't live like that. You just live inside. That's it. (laughs) But yeah, All Star and stuff was really cool. You know, All Star is always fun. And every, obviously, everything's different with COVID. Yeah. But I feel like this year they they didn't treat us like All Stars. I felt like an outcaster, honestly. Like, if we want to keep it real and say the tea is hot, (laughs) I felt like I wasn't an All Star. Like, I just felt like I was there visiting and like, being there for the all-stars i feel like we were still all-stars at the end of the day Mm -hmm. of course we had to focus on the olympic stuff but at the same time i was like dang can we get a little love but yeah we were so cute on the orange carpet it was good i'm glad we got a couple games underneath our belt Mm -hmm. um to for fans to see us before we leave and to be in the arena and stuff Mm -hmm. Um, but i think it also helped us as well for nigeria and our and our like 
group play. So it should be fun. Speaking of Nigeria, we play them in Vegas. Yeah. And I don't know if everyone knows this. I'm sure if you're listening to this, you keep up with basketball a little bit. So you know about the Agumake sisters and yeah. Elizabeth Williams with Team Nigeria. And so, you know, all that stuff with Nanko, she didn't make the USA team. Yeah. And so her and her sisters were trying to be on the Nigerian team yeah. along with Elizabeth Williams. And they said no. That's like, I don't know. That's just tough. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't stand it because they're just great players and they deserve to play and, and be on so many other rosters. Uh, but that's just a tough situation to be in. And mm -hmm. I felt really bad, honestly. I felt really bad too. I wish Nanko could, I think Chanae, was cleared, but she's still hurt. And oh, I know Erica oh. is on the team. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But NECA, man. I know, but Nigeria's a tough one. They're mm -hmm. like full of energy. It's first be, game. Right, it's gonna be a good first game. I definitely say that. <laughs> it definitely, I mean, I wish NECA was on the team for, for NECA, but it definitely would have made this game a lot harder. So right. for Team USA, <laughs> it's good news. For everything else, it's not good news. <laughs> yes, another big news we had was Candace Parker being on the cover of First female athlete. That's amazing. So, that's so for cool. Candace, yeah, man. That's seriously. big time. Like, I don't even play video games, but I'm going to get that. Just a frame and, it. Yeah, <laughs> like, and even, like, that push for Candace into All-Star was, like, amazing. Like, she mm -hmm. got the slam cover, then she had this cover. Like, that's just big deal for her. Mm -hmm. Got to give flowers to Candace yeah. always. She's doing <laughs> her thing. And she was talking a little shit on always, Twitter always. and always yes <laughs> uh, but it's pretty cool I'm not a video person but it is awesome to see people like play as me in a video game mm -hmm. and tell me about my rankings so greatly appreciate that can't wait to do my face scan so they can get my eyebrows oh you time. haven't done it yet no oh. and I still don't have eyebrows so hopefully now that I have eyebrows they'll pick those <laughs> <Yeah>. up <laughs> Hey, yo, Ronnie, give me some um, acrylic fingernails, too. Mm. I mean, tune in. We need Ronnie 2K on that. Yes. Can we do some <laughs> editing? Can, like, we right, kind of do editing on that? Like, some baby hairs, like, lashes. Uh, yeah, some lashes. Ronnie, I like my eyebrows for them a little bit. Talk to us. Y'all be giving Maybe us take too away much this double chin. and not here. <laughs> Maybe take away my little chin here. Get a little sucking off of that. <laughs> oh. It is cool to see yourself in the video games, though, because I don't play either, but yeah. people, you know, tag you. Is that me? Is that right. really what I look like? I'm like, dang, that's sometimes yeah. I see it and sometimes I'm like, oof. <laughs> the guys, it looks like just like them in yeah. some cases. Candace's like, like, for this one. Yeah, like, they're like smirk that they Yeah, <laughs> that looks like, like Candace. That yeah. was good. Yeah, I love that. Right. So this play yes. new with Asia, yes. inspiring the next generation of players. Tell us what that's about. You know, it's just like a different avenue. Like Nike kind of sat me down and wanted to take a different approach to things of how they go about it and always playing new, bringing something new to the table, doing something mm -hmm. bigger than the sport that may be at hand. And it was pretty cool to do something because it allowed me to be uh, me, you mm -hmm. know, like I feel like I have to be politically correct a lot of times or yeah. cancel culture and all that stuff. Don't want to be a part of that. But at the end of the day, if it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. And this campaign allowed me to be myself and speak up for that next generation of young Black girls that wants to be in my position or be better than me. So I had a lot of fun just being myself. I had like a tutu on and then mm -hmm. I was in sweats. So it kind of like brought out different sides of yeah. Asia. <laughs> it is like freeing being able to, that's what I like about our podcast, you know, freeing being able to not have to speak so politically correct and yes. speaking your mind. So like how much more comfortable are you now speaking your mind than when you first entered the league? Um, Ooh, I think I was pretty outspoken when I first got to the league because that's when I had my first big viral tweet going on when I tweeted about LeBron signing to the Lakers for something and everyone mm -hmm. just jumped on my case. Mm -hmm. Didn't really care. <laughs> so I think there, that's when I was like, you know what, like I have a voice that's going, it's on a platform and it's caring. Mm -hmm. So why not speak out for something that I believe in? So I think I've gotten more comfortable, of course, as it comes with age and just being in a league and understanding who cares? They're going to yeah. talk about you anyway. Just do yep. you. Can't make everyone happy. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, we're just going to speak out for what we believe in. Yes. So what issues are most important for you to talk about or speak up about? Ooh, I would just have to say for the people that look like me, you know, like I, I feel like now is the perfect time to start speaking about that and mm -hmm. constantly being on the forefront of that is huge because it's something that I can really relate to and people can see that and want to learn more about that. And I can also just be myself. I don't have to kind of change it up, just trying to fit in, just mm -hmm. be me and continue to do me and speak out in that way. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs>
Okay, so before we go to break, we've got to give some props presented by the WNBA, where we highlight someone who is crushing it on the court. Sophie, who you shout out this week? Okay, well, as we all know, tonight is the inaugural WNBA Commissioner's Cup Championship game. So I'm going to shout out the one and only John Quill Jones, mm -hmm. who takes the stage tonight with the Connecticut Sun. John Quill's on fire this season. She's one of the league's top leading scorers, rebounders, and she's knocking down three pointers left and right. How about you? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, on that note, I'm giving props to Seattle Storm coach Noelle Quinn. She stepped up into the head coaching seat six games into the season and has handled the pressure and leading the rain champs to an, as an absolute boss. She's been killing it. Noelle, you got it. So the next part of the show, we have a very special guest, someone so dear to Asia's heart. Oh my goodness. Mine as well. Oh, Don't the introduce sweetest our person. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to introduce our new guest? She's from North. Philly. That's all I'm Standing I five foot two, <laughs> weighing 130 pounds wet. wet. <laughs> so, Michelle In the wise words of Beyonce, don't try to lessen yourself for the world. Let the world catch up to you. True leaders know that to be successful, you have to set the pace and run your own race, sometimes before an empty stadium. WIST is a modern tax and accounting firm that cheers on the underdog. They're the coach you need by your side to support all your business needs. Whether you're looking to scale your business, sell your business, or you just have questions, WIST is your one-stop financial expert. They're also into tech, entrepreneurship, and well, of course, Beyonce. Expect the unexpected at WIST. That's W-I-S-S dot com slash J-W-S. Welcome back, everyone. We have our guest, Coach Daly. <laughs> Thank you for coming on with us. Thank you for having me. Well, as you guys know, oh, go ahead. I feel special. Thank you. Welcome to the tea. Squished in between us, too. <laughs> Type it today. Well, as y'all know, we are in Tokyo here at the Olympics, and you were a part of five of the six. Like, just tell us, like, how that all happened, like what's going on now as like from where you're a player to now a coach, like what's up? Like, what does it take? Tell us what does it take? We're new to this. Well, well, it, it takes getting cut because I got cut from the 1992 Olympic team. Okay. And when I got cut, I was actually college basketball, women's basketball player of the year, two-time player of the year. I went to the trials. I thought I had a really good trial. Yeah. Um, only to get cut. But then I start thinking, this is tea, right? Y'all want some yeah, tea? Yeah, yeah, tea. Spill it all. Yeah, give it the tea. So I started thinking back in 1991, there was a world championship that I played in. Yeah. Um, they brought Susie McConnell back for that tournament. Okay, so you got to think. You got to think big now. Right. Right. <laughs> big, think big. Right. So I, I was wondering why they brought her back because you actually had to be in school to actually play in that world championship. You had to be enrolled in school. And Susie was was probably two, three, four years, maybe five years removed from college. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you fast forward back to 1992. Susie's there at the trials. I got cut, Susie makes the team. And two of the reasons why they said I didn't I, I didn't make the team was one, I was too short. Susie Small, she's shorter than me. Mm -hmm. And then two, I didn't have enough international experience. So I couldn't do anything about my height. So I, I, I went over and overseas and sucked that up yeah. and said that if I'm ever in that position again, I'm 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 going to the Olympics. I like that. Right? Mm -hmm. So I got cut, got myself together. Now most people, that's a crossroad. Right. There was there wasn't a WNBA. It was you had to go suck it up and go overseas and play. And it's not like how y'all, well, you you go see. It's not like you had <laughs> three months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, right? Right? <laughs> oh my god! But y'all have access to the internet. You got. Right. I had two thousand dollar phone bills because I was missing home. Mm -hmm. But but I just learned a valuable lesson that you have to do what you don't want to do to get what you want. Mm -hmm. Period. So I went overseas, got three years of experience, came back to the trials in, in 1995, and 
I just wasn't going to be denied. So it started with that. I only wanted to do one. I just well, wanted one Olympic Games. Uh, that, that was my lifelong dream. Olympics and national championship. Mm -hmm. So once you start playing in the Olympic Games, you have like aspirations to play in more and more and more and more. And then you have, once I got into coaching, I got, I had aspirations to coach and coach at the highest level. And I got two opportunities as a, an assistant coach under the late great Ann Donovan. And then um, Gino, you know, gave me an opportunity to, to coach under him in the 2016 Olympic Games. And then now, I mean, Look at you. Man. Look where we're at. <laughs> Man. Look at that. So do you think it's harder to lead the team as a player or a coach? Like more pressure. Which one would you say? Oh, more pressure as a coach. As a coach. Because nothing's, you know, nothing's in your control. Everything mm -hmm. is player driven. Everything, you know, you got to execute. Yeah. Um, as a coach, you have to you have to give the players space to to do their thing. And you just step in every now and then just kind of guide them. Yeah. And it's, and I, I hope they're treating me like I treated some of my other Olympic coaches in that just don't get in the way. Let us, let us do this. We got this. We've been here before. We just going to need some guidance um, every now and then, uh, you know, instances in practice or, or, or games, we need you to just say, Hey, here, here's an option for us. Mm -hmm. And then the players, the players are magical. Ooh, we're magical. Oh, I like that. Well, I like that too. I mean, since we're like your first team as you coach, we got to be your favorite team USA, right? This team? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the way she said, ah, this, this, team? this team? Yeah. I mean, this team doesn't have a medal yet. But yeah. so far. Oh, but like, so far, like, we have to be your best. The like, whole experience? Yeah. Like, um, yeah, because you're, you're my only team. <laughs> <laughs> you're my wow. only team. Okay. My only Olympic team. Right, so you can say we're your favorites. Uh, by far, my faves. Mm. All right, that's all Thank I you. wanted. That's it, guys. You're okay, right well, what's been your favorite Olympics to be at? Like, what was the coolest experience? Oh, mm. I, I, there, there are a lot of, I've, I've played and coached in a lot of them. My favorite is probably 1996 Olympic team because, first one, first one yeah. because a, a lot came out of it. Not only did we, win the gold medal in, you know, great started fashion. Started this run for us. Yes, <laughs> started the run, but the relationships, the the um, the professional leagues that came out of it, mm -hmm. um, ABL, that's the Forgotten League, and then the, and the WNBA, which is still in existence, and it's older than the two of you, right? The league is older. How old are you now? Same age. Same, yeah. As the league? Yeah. This is my 25th year of life, yeah, and this is the 25th yeah. year. Of oh, that's cool. So, so you, you, you all have only known the WNBA. Yeah, that's pretty damn cool. Yeah, see, yeah, you started damn. it. Look at you. Well, I, I, it comes I, I didn't start it. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't start it, but yeah, but you're you part, were of, part the, of it. That team, yeah, yeah. But I'm proud of y'all. Hey, thanks, oh. coach. Oh, oh <laughs> the nicest you've ever been to you. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Before you even make comment, uh, uh, we're gonna okay. So we just had the opening ceremony. It was um, really hot, but a great experience. Mm -hmm. But you know, we always talk about the drip. So, what was your favorite like Olympic opening ceremony drip? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Probably um, 2004. Okay, really? well, to the to take us through the fit. It was a skirt. Okay. A skirt? Not your yeah. favorite? It was a mini. It was a mini. A skirt? A skirt. Okay. It, I mean, I need felt, to bring those back. I wish I could have seen BG in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I would have paid for that too. Yeah, that would have been one. a ceremony. <laughs> it was a, it was a, Roots. Roots okay. is a um, Canadian brand, I believe. Roots, R-O-O-T-S. Um, we had like little Kango hats, oh. but they were Roots hats. Mm -hmm. It was a um, mini. You could, you, you had a choice, okay. a skirt, or they had like a um, capris. Oh, but, damn, but, so we wouldn't have seen BG in this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, But But all of us, I mean, when you are, when you have on the same outfit, yeah. I know some people like to do certain things with the accessories, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. You can see people's personalities, but I, my first choice wasn't a skirt, but it was, it was cool because it was, it was a skirt. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't wear a whole lot of skirts, but to do it 
And then I was the flag bearer, so. Yeah. There it is. It was so cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had my hat. Yep. Had my hair done. Okay. Um, it was your hair. Huh? Was what was your hair? Flowing. Oh. Flowing. Oh. Flowing. Yes. Flowing. You were flowing. cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Not as cute as Suda. Sue was super cute. It was pretty nice. That, that was nice. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's really so what? I wanted to actually ask you about the flag bearer. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, what happened when they contacted you about that? And how did it make you feel when they asked you to be the flag bearer? That's cool. Now I'm going to take, it's probably a lot different now that we're in like a, a pandemic, but here's how we chose the flag bear. You, you, all the captains of every team at the Olympic games, we come together in one room mm -hmm. and anybody that anybody there can, can um, bring in a candidate. Okay. So we sat through it was, it was probably about 15 to 20 people. And, you know, I had to represent myself. My teammates told me, you go, you know, you're our choice. <laughs> but I was the only one that was in the room. Everybody else was, was, um, was, um, was bringing in other candidates. Like, okay. and, and you have to understand it is athletes who have overcome like life-threatening illnesses, injuries. And then it was like little old me. <laughs> So I had to actually get up and like stand in front of everybody and say, well, my, my teammates wanted me to nominate myself. And at that time I had a foundation yeah. um, that serviced middle school girls. Also was uh, coaching at Temple University. Also was, you know, about to play in my third Olympic games. And mm -hmm. that was the extent of, of it. Yeah. So after you hear about 20 candidates, all different types of stories. We just take a vote and then we come, we take a vote and they, they, they come back with the top five and I was in the top five. Me? Like, I did not vote for myself, y'all. <laughs> Why? And then, no, there's no proof. We can't go back now. Well, right. I mean, people had like life threatening. Right. Yeah. Touched your heart. It did. It did. Yeah. And then quickly you go back out of the five, you, you, you come up with your top three. Oh, really wow. quick though. Once we got the vote in, it, it went by quick. Mm -hmm. And then I was part of the three. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like really. And then we just quickly did another vote of those three and came back with the flag burner. And I was like, it was me. And I, I really awesome. did not comprehend what that was. Uh -huh. So I yeah, I left that meeting and met with Carol Callen outside. And I just told her, I said, Carol, they, they voted me for, as a flag bearer. She was like, what? <laughs> you, got, you got to call home. And they told me not to tell anybody. Yeah. He said, keep it quiet. So it was, it was the coolest, coolest, very cool, um, probably one of the most uh, gratifying moments because as athletes and coaches, you, you, know, you aspire to, to be an Olympian. Mm -hmm. You just... I guess some people do now want to be the flag bearer. Maybe Sue wanted to be that mm -hmm. since, you know, this is her fifth one. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you if you're in the game long enough, it, it brings out other aspirations, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Wow, that's awesome. Jeez, that's, that's nice. I know. That was, that gave me chills. That really that's nice. awesome. I've never heard that story. That was really good. Because it's been all about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to shift gears because you actually said heading into our next segment where you were talking about, you know, coaching at Temple and then you were playing like, I know you're a woman of many hats, but like, how do you manage that? Like how, I know Lindsay Whalen mm -hmm. did it with Minnesota, but like, that's a lot to yeah, just do all that. Like, how did you do that? Did you sleep? Did you eat? <laughs> like. Oh, um, did you have a planner? Right, like how? No, I mean, I, when when you surround yourself with great people mm -hmm. that are singularly focused on being successful, they they know what it takes. Like it, when I was coaching for eight, how many years? I coached for six years, playing and coaching mm -hmm. at Temple, um, and we had a lot of staff turnover in the very beginning because we just didn't have the right staff that could handle both of it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Coach Boyer, Lisa Boyer, who's here, um, I begged her to come to our, come on our staff, like literally begged her. She was coaching in the WNBA with the Cleveland Rockers with Coach Hughes, who's here. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a small, oh, yeah, small world. So once I lost that staff member, I called her every day. 
Every day, <laughs> seriously, every day. And I'm, I didn't even say hello. I just said, you coming? You coming, you coming, you coming, you coming. And I wore it down and she didn't want to come. She didn't because she was like, I don't want to recruit. I said, you don't have to recruit, right? You don't have to do anything. But um, then she came and then I was able to do it because you know, she is, she's been a coach for a very long time. She knows the ins and outs of, of being a coach, all the administrative work. All of that stuff, you got to find people that can help you. I didn't, I didn't want her to do the job for me. I want you to help me, teach me what it takes to be a good coach, you know, just all around coach. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just got a staff that has been together uh, for a long time, and that's what it takes. And then, you know, each each step, each thing that you're involved in, you have to have people that's committed to. To, to being successful and not use it as a crutch. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, the recruiting ploy was our coach can't come see you, but you can come see her mm -hmm. during one of the Olympic games. That's, I mean, not the Olympic games, the WNBA, WNBA games. games. Yeah. That's, that's a pool. I'll commit. <laughs> I can go see my coach who? Okay, cool. That means she ain't at um, practice. Two years later, making that commitment. <sighs> There she you go. Forever. She took forever, Fee. You wore it down just like Coach Lisa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know I was getting myself into, but it's oh, okay. We're going to keep, go ahead, Fee. We're not going to get it. <laughs> But we were actually talking about this. I don't remember if it was today or yesterday about the change in the game. Like, even from my uh, freshman year of college mm -hmm. to my senior year, I'm three years remo removed from that class. And I feel like I was so different, like, mm -hmm. in the way that I played the game, in the way that like personality wise. So like, how different is it from you? Like from when you were playing to the people that you're coaching now? I can't even go there from when I was playing because that was so, 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 so long ago. Yeah. So I'll just go like, I you guess. all are even what, us. four or five years removed? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I it's graduated changed. 14, I graduated, I mean, uh, 18, 18, I graduated 19. Yeah, it's, it's changed. Like really? it's gotten younger, like the mentality, the maturity level. And I'm not saying everybody, but you know, like, you know, you know, a mature person, like a mature player, because they stick out. The other ones don't stick. They all blend together. Like, you know, you know, what can we post? Oh, yeah. What's, you know, yeah, yeah. TikTok, everything is competing <laughs> for attention. The content. Oh, yes, cloud. everything. Yeah. Um, parents are a little bit different because they are, yes. you know, when I got into coaching, parents were were older than me. Now I'm older than the parents. So you can see that it's a lot different how, how people parent. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, they're lenient. They are, you know, they don't have, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say everybody, but they're just more lax because yeah. that's the way it is now. And mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's a, it's not a, it's not a good or bad thing until you, you run into <laughs> trying to trying to help them prioritize their time and manage their time. I'm almost, you know, I, I like the fact that we had NIL now because Ooh, they have to grow up. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they really have to grow up and be a business if that's what they, if yeah. that's what yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. So you can't do the same things that you've been doing because you're a brand. Uh, yeah. So, true. so it's pretty cool. Good luck. Yep. Yeah. 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 Take those, take that money out of their pockets. Then, then they'll straighten up. Yeah. We needed that. Oh, we needed that, Fee. Oh, my goodness. Hello, spending money? <laughs> Bumble calls of attendance. I got my check coming in, y'all. My, my little jingle attendance. check coming in. They, they might cost take that away. <laughs> what oh, really? Cost of attendance? I, they're going to, I think schools are going to take away a lot of things that. They get cost of attendance in it? What? I think they're going to take it away. Oh. Meaning that's going to go but not away. not everyone is marketable. Like, That's true, but you gotta find it. This this is law. What then. are you gonna find? You know how many athletes there are at each school, and like some yeah. sports aren't like you're not seeing these sports. Right. Oh, They're not gonna get tough. money. All of these convert. Th these are Damn. dynamics of the NIL that mm -hmm. people aren't talking about. Right. Like student athletes should be advocating to keep their keep their cost <laughs> of attendance, yes. keep, keep, everything. keep everything because mm. once you start making money. The school is going to protect itself because yep. the school may, they think they're going to lose money. So 
You know what's so crazy is when I thought about this NIL, like all this stuff that's actually happening didn't even cross my mind. I'm like, ooh, they can go to camps and make money. Yeah, like, that's all I camp. wanted. In like, college, that's all I wanted was like, hold the camp. Like, yes. in college camp, make some money. Like, sell like, some t-shirts or something. Yep. Right. Yep. After a game, just sign a couple more guys. Like, and all this stuff that they're actually dealing with, like, that's tough. They have no I don't idea. think it was intended even. Like, I feel like when they did the NIL, it was for that kind of stuff. Like, so you could do yeah. camps and you can do like stuff like that, but they're taking it like it's a business. Like so they they can sign with an agent. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, crazy. that's stressful. You're oh, already no. doing. I mean, I remember like you had school and basketball. There was barely any time for anything else. Like if you want to go to a party, Girl. it was exhausting because. But you found a way. <laughs> you found you <laughs> rallied. You found. I don't see what I'm gonna do it, but I was. <laughs> it was tough when you had an assignment due. You had to go to that kickback, but you found a way. Oh, but now you, you, you found a way to drive to you drive. To okay. okay, 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 okay. We're gonna get there later. Okay. We're gonna get there later. Okay. Let's not jump the gun. Okay. No. We're we'll fine at the time. Oh, we're gonna get there you later. No way. At the end of the day, you find a way. We're not we're going to the next segment. We're not going to the T segment. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> again, see, this is anyway, back to you and your coaching coach. You know, we heard you were entertaining Portland. And they had that uh, oh, opening. Okay. Yeah, we, we heard you were entertaining that. I was waiting to get the call and say, when we going to Portland? But it's okay. Uh, how was that approach? Like, did you really want the job? Or like, do you ever think you want to coach in the NBA? Like, what was that all about? Take this, us through that. This is some tea for real, because I really haven't talked about Come this. Come on. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I had never had like an ounce of me that wanted to coach in the WNBA or the NBA, mm. not like like none of me, Un- until <laughs> <laughs> until somebody you know sought me out, yeah. like like the Portland Trailblazers, and that, and when you when you're being sought out, you you have to vet it a little bit yeah. to see if they're really serious about it. Like, are they really serious? Um, and I, I thought they treated me like a real candidate, whether or not I was, you know, they seriously considered me. I felt like it wasn't a fluke. It was, so I, so I agreed to do it and, um, and it was a zoom and there were like four or five people around and they, they were just firing questions. And a lot of them had to do with, with the ex and the knowing they, they didn't really, they say you don't really have to know as much right now. Mm-hmm. We want to know how you would deal with star players. How would you deal with players who didn't play? How would you deal with just I bet that is behavior? most of the job. That is yeah. most of the job. And um I I I it was it was it was it was really, really a great experience. I took a lot of notes. Um because if another female is ever in that position, mm-hmm. I got the notes and I'm, I'm gonna give them everything that they asked me, how I answered it, what they said. Mm-hmm. Um, but a couple a couple days later, they, they decided to go in a different direction. But I, I thank them for the experience. I thank them for just treating me as if, you know, I was a, a serious candidate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what would you do with the star player? I didn't wanna, play. they're like, Star player, you know, doesn't show up to training camp. None of that. Okay, that's just one. They don't show up to training camp. Mm-hmm. What would you do? Um, see, I it, that's just like an isolated incident. Like prior to training camp, I would have probably established a relationship. Like I would have went out of my way, went to where they were, and not only just met him, but his family, his mm-hmm. wife, his girlfriend. I would have met every significant person in their, his life. Both his wife and his girlfriend. Every significant person. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, so I don't know about that. I don't know about that. (laughs) I was gonna say T. So I mean, if it takes that, it takes that. So it it probably wouldn't have gotten to that point where you know you're missing training camp. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's a good answer. I, I mean, hire you. Yeah. I mean, that's who you are as a person as well. Like you really like relationships and building that. Like that's very key. And that's mm-hmm. why we're so close. <laughs> but speaking ahead. of yeah. coaching jobs, um, how are you approached to get this head coaching job for USA? How did I? Yeah. Um, 
I, I think what what happens with USA basketball is you have to you have to let them know that you have interests. And then I, I I don't think I got the job because I was a part of two Olympic staffs like as an assistant coach. I, I got the job because of my service as a player. And then I, I coached a lot of USA basketball teams. I coached the Pan American games. I coached U19, U19. Mm-hmm. Um, I just coached an, another America Cup team. Yeah. So it is, you know, you just don't go from, okay, being a good college coach to boom, you're, you're an Olympic coach. It is, you have to put your, you know, your time and your effort and your work into um, coaching some of the younger teams. So, you know, they're, they're watching you. They're looking at you. They're seeing how you deal with people. They're seeing how you deal with situations that aren't always, you know, nice. Like it's, this is nice. This is the best of the best. We stay in nice hotels. Right. Mm-hmm. We, that's not always the case. Yeah. You know, that's not always the case. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to go through that because you have to understand that everything's going to be as, um, you know, as, as, as nice, yeah. you know, you yeah. work your way up to the national team. And I just yeah. felt like I, I got plenty of opportunity to help with my cause of being, being a, the, the head coach of an Olympic team. Yeah. I like that. Well, coach, mm-hmm. it's time to get to the fun zone. Oh, we oh, got God. games to play. We got oh, tea to spill. Yes. Okay. Let's do the other bench one Which that we one? talked about earlier at practice. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> We're playing start, bench, cut. Okay. You oh, know that game? God. Yeah. <laughs> so start, bench, cut. Our coaches, Coach Reeve, Coach Dan, <laughs> and Coach Jen. Start, bench, and cut. cut. God. I'm going to I'm gonna go with an all female. So Dan's got Dan's a big cut. Out. Right. Dang. Who am I starting? Shoot. <laughs> Who am I starting? I, I, I'm gonna have to start Cheryl. Ooh, okay, okay. Sure. Take the jacket off, <laughs> and then I gotta bring the, the trusty mind off the bench. And, yeah, okay. And, and that's a good one. That's <laughs> a good one. Okay, that was good. That was good. Yeah. Six, point guard in the game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bring in the other point guard. I agree you you didn't don't have to lose. Cut Dan, you though. don't lose ground. You didn't have to cut Dan. Sure. <laughs> Let's spill some tea. What's the tea? Do you have to spill? with us today. Oh, I have some questions. Oh, wow. I have some questions for Coach. I want some South Carolina tea. Okay. I heard that Asia was a little boy crazy in college. What are some of those (laughs) stories? I heard you reference Virginia earlier. I want to know what happened there. Oh my goodness! And you, Asia. You cannot name drop nothing. I'm not name dropping anything. No name drops, but all stories. I'm not name (laughs) dropping anything. Like, Asia just she gets smitten with <laughs> with people. It doesn't matter if 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 they're buying her dinner or never buying her dinner. I um, love her. I used to love her. Right. Art. Hard. Like I was yeah. oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> and I gotta give you a little background because even though she, even though she's got a mom who is like a disciplinarian, is take no crap. Dad, she can get over with every day of the week. <laughs> Your daddy's Roscoe. Right. So <laughs> they put her in private school from first to 12th grade. Mm-hmm. Clamps. Uh, clamps on her. Ooh, the moment she got to college. Free, huh? <laughs> you were free, huh? The moment she got to college, she's searching. She's searching. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't <laughs> yeah. searching, but they were searching for me, she too. Let's not get it twisted. So she had a little boyfriend, you know. Do we really want to call it? A little boyfriend. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, that's great. Down that's the road. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the boyfriend. That's not, the boyfriend. No, not not Virginia. That was an, another a different guy. Oh, no, we're not going to say that. If it's not Virginia, it's not a boyfriend. We're not going to give that title to non Virginia. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you and Alicia didn't. Okay, y'all that went was to Virginia, my, that but was y'all, my... y'all went to the other place too. All right, all right, all right. That's I, not a, that okay, wasn't a boyfriend. Okay, okay. What other place? You got it. You I mean, the same place uh, Alicia Gray got her man. All That's right. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. So we need but, to bring Gray on the show. Yes, bring Gray on the show. But you know, Asia used to she came in my office, sat down, and just boo hooing. <laughs> so I'm like looking at her, like, okay, what's going on? Her and a man broke up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I just talked to her. Why, you know, this, that. 
this, that, and the third. Oh, I like saying that because I hear other people say that. This, that, and the third. <laughs> um, so I just said, okay, well, you should dry your tears because you're, you're going to be talking to him probably in the next 24 to 48 hours, definitely next week. <laughs> so until you're able to just cut it, cut them loose, you know, wipe your tears, you know, wipe your nose, here's some Kleenex, I keep that by my, by my desk and just handle it. I think AJ at that time was probably trying to get out of practice though. Well, uh, I wasn't mentally, I wasn't mentally prepared because I just went through a lot. Like I was drained that whole night of just like crying and thinking. So I couldn't go out there and perform. <laughs> so yeah. Did she go to practice? Uh, yeah. I gotta protect my peace. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make her understand it's not really a big deal. You, you're gonna laugh at this later on in life. If, if you don't, I'm gonna. I'm going to make it funny enough so you'll laugh at it. Clearly. And and here we are. Oh, I got some other tea, too. Can I tell this tea? Yes. I don't know what tea it is, but go ahead. Hey, what what else? What, what else? Now, Eva is the funniest oh. lady ever, right? So Eva went to go visit Asia in a room. And I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. She, right? no. Was no, this ain't the same time. This ain't the oh, same thing. Oh, oh, oh. It might have been the same person, but she told me she saw something in the trash can. Oh! She texted me while she was there. Something in the trash can. Oh, where'd she see the trash um, can? Trojan man. <laughs> Yo! Yo! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was the rapping, y'all. It, was, it wasn't the actual thing. It was the, the rapping. At least she was, at least she was having a safe. You were protected. Yeah, yeah. You were protected. Thank you. Thank you. You were protected. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. So watch, young people, watch what you put in the trash. Your parents <laughs> might come visit you. But at the end of the that day. That wasn't yours. No, she had I'm, her own room. I'm not doing this. At the end of the day, you know, life is full of lessons. And I've learned mine. But also. What's you, the lesson? Just, <laughs> What is it? That's leave your college coach out of stuff. <laughs> leave them out of stuff. Listen, you got to move how you want to move. I was smooth going to Virginia, though. See, let me tell you a story. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know. We can cut this out if it doesn't make it. But, you know, I had a little thing, a little, a little boyfriend was playing in Virginia. So I was like, all right, bet. Let's go. So Coach Staley, when she feels, it seems as if like when she knows we have something, she tries everything in her <laughs> might for us not to do it. We never have film. All of a sudden we have film. So I'm like, Leash, how are we going to go to Virginia? We got film. So I was like, we just got to cut. Mind you, it's a game. We got a game coming up. <laughs> yeah, we got a game like two days. Like, yeah, yeah. Not that night, but the night after. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, we can make it. Literally drove to Virginia five and a half hours. Oh, man. Went to the game then drove back five more hours and had to be at practice by nine o'clock. We literally got back into Columbia at like 7.30. Like oh. we just made it like oh. we- You didn't play like, well either. Yeah, I stunk <laughs> Did you, it up. Did you win? No, I didn't know that. She held that until after she graduated. Yeah, I, I, That's probably a good idea. Yeah, never, I'm never yeah. telling that. Probably yeah. But Leash yeah. went with me, she stuck it out. Leash's my role dog, love you for that. She was tired in practice too. <laughs> But um, yeah. Get you yeah. a friend like Alicia Gray. Yeah, yeah, we were doing homework on the road, like mm -hmm. everything. We were good. You're but... studious. See, look. See? <laughs> God, you <laughs> make it work. Well, you protected yourself again. <laughs> you <laughs> make it work. You, you stay protected. Work. <laughs> You're responsible. See, she has responsibility. She's responsible. <laughs> responsibility on it, yes. So for everyone out there, you know, college kids, when you move, make sure you move with somebody like really cool <laughs> and don't tell your college coach nothing. Don't they, they come snooping around, just keep it pushing. <laughs> okay, so we heard crazy Asia stories. Do you have any crazy Don stories? Ooh, Either one of you. I, I, your I, party always, days. I always tell the story where oh, let's see. it was a hard practice. I mean, B, this is the worst practice <laughs> ever. And so we have Why, like- you guys got in trouble? Yes. So our practice is recorded. Like we can really like watch the practice. So we were running sprints. <laughs> we were running sprints. And then that's when Coach Staley accused my teammate <laughs> of not touching the line. So I was like, ain't no way. Like, no way. I was like, run the clip, run the clip. So we go over there and look at the monitor. <laughs> she touches the line. Coach Staley's like, nah, she ain't touch, she ain't touch it. So, B, I'm turning away 
from Coach Daly. Yeah, not even the, in the sweet old Asia. I'm, <laughs> sweet. I'm turning away from her. And I was like, that's bullshit. So this lady, she knows I'm not talking to her. She looks at me. She <laughs> I, said, I Michael Price you, didn't I? I went underneath. You did. <laughs> she was, she said, she said, I gotta get a kill. She said, what you say? <laughs> I said, Coach, I wasn't even talking. She said, no, 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 no. Everybody get on line. Everybody running. So at this point, we've already ran so much, like so much. People are like, I, could, I was, I was hurt. What did you say? I was hurt. But I, no one was talking to you. I was hurt. I was the only one that was talking, though. I was the only one talking was, before you said that. <laughs> so who was she talking to? Like, really? <laughs> it was it made it worse for me because she had media. So she's the media, like, oh, like, yeah, you know, we're prepping for a game. People are crawling, like, <gasps> the media, like, oh. like, it looks so bad. I was like, come on, y'all. And I didn't talk to her at all. And I had a meeting where my parents had a meeting with her and they were like, Asia, come up to the office. I was like, I ain't going up to that office. Like, man, Bunko stay like, duh. <laughs> and then I went up there and I was like, nobody was talking to me. That was our little beef. We had <laughs> two days. She didn't speak for me for a couple days. Yeah, I avoided her. It's okay. I said, she'll be back. <laughs> she'll be back. She'll, she'll be back. <laughs> and it was so annoying because no one was talking to you. You just needed that reason. Uh -huh, to keep y'all, you know, sprinting up and down the floor. Why were you in trouble in the first place? Like, why was it a bad practice? It's just one of them days. See, I, you, you need to keep around you. <laughs> no, it was one of, no. she's cerebral. She wants to know the origin. No, it was one of those I need days. the villain yes, origin yes, story. Yes, <laughs> like, Coach Staley, we could wear earrings all whole year, and it'll be the last game of the season. She's like, you got earrings in your head. Get on the line. It's like, we've been wearing these. It's just one of those days where she about the pearl necklace, though? I remember that pearl necklace. <laughs> See, I would be when rocking that. Games, you'd be wearing it in warm-ups. Like, exactly. Oh, and then all of a sudden, she's like, no, we need to take that out. And it's just now, like... Now, let me ask you, does she wear the pearl pearl now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she created better habits. Like, <laughs> I, I want them to create habits that they'll, they'll have as a pro. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're not gonna do it as a, as a pro, then don't do it as a collegiate player. Man, that's when you're supposed to pop out, like you, you know, see, being on like ESPN, those big Monday games, like that's when you pop out because you like. Wear your hey. Sunday best. Yeah, like you there, like ooh, <laughs> we didn't really have tunnel fit. You just had to show it. <laughs> Me is funny, y'all. Me is funny. <laughs> your Sunday best. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, is there anything else you would like to share with the people? Get it off the chest. Mm. No, I mean, when I you hear crazy, I want to hear like a party crazy story from you. I don't party. When you, not in college or anything? When no. you first got to leave? Singularly focused. For real. Like, you I'm didn't a, have I'm one a, night toxic. where you were crazy. In, in college, I, I in college as a freshman. Okay. Um, yeah, freshman year, I'll get you. Yeah. yeah it, counseling. It, I, 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 I chug some uh, vodka and orange juice, just straight down. Ooh. I'm from, I'm from North Philly, so it really didn't do anything to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that was it, like, no, seriously. I was like, I didn't I didn't go out. I didn't like the party. Mm -hmm. I was, I just love basketball. For real, like, oh, for boring. I feel it. Boring, very, very boring. I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way now. Mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm the same way too, yeah. No, I, 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 I don't think that. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I was always, you know, too, mm -hmm. a student of the game. Until five <laughs> points was called. When five points called, I had to an answer a couple times. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much for listening, everyone. Yes, thanks Please. for being on, Coach Staley. Yes, you're awesome. You were a good thank guy. Thank y'all. Yes. Was I really yeah, good? You were really good. Energy too. Yeah, you were really good. Oh, thank you. No, so no, was he's the one, though. Fee <laughs> slides her stuff in there. Yes. It's yes. good. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> So don't forget to follow on Apple Podcasts and subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to justwomensports.com. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and YouTube channel and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Nafisa. And I'm Asia. And you're listening to Tea with a &B, presented by the WNBA. Sometimes to succeed, you can't do it alone. You need a team that understands your business on a personal level. WIS takes progressive approach to help you win. Think, less calculators, more conversations. WIS is a proud supporter of this podcast and the JWS community. To discover how WIS is more than just an accounting firm, visit WIS, that's W-I-S-S dot com slash J-W-S.